wiggle. Almost there. Wiggle, wiggle. I'll tell you, this, this manifold's probably never been off before. Vibration wiggle. Ham, ham. It's like impacting. You, you tweak it left and right. Re really get those threads wallered. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Right here, this is my personal, you might have seen it in the videos or whatnot, looming in the background. But yes, this is my 2002 C5 Corvette. It's just a base model. I don't have money for, uh, you know, Z06s. But anywho, this is the first time I actually have. I owned it since November. Um, this is what, March we're in? Late February and March? Anywho, first time I've ever had this thing on the rack. I've had a persistent oil leak since I've had the car. Um, and well, I'm hoping it's not the rear main, because if it is, well, I'm not, not going to be happy because I will farm that job off. Because it's like going to a proctologist to get a root canal. You got to drop the, you know, the whole back of the car to get to the belt, you know, to, to the rear main. But I digress and regress to this. Pretty sure, you know, I threw my borescope in there, so on and so forth. And it looks like, you know, stereotypical oil pressure sender or cam position sensor back of the block behind the intake, you know, manifold. Got to remove everything. So, what I'm gonna do is replace those sensors. Hopefully the oil is gonna stay in the engine, which would be ideal. And um, yeah, not have to farm this out to do a rear main. Could I do one? Yeah. Am I set up for one? Nope. Am I gonna do another one that would actually pay me to get good at it? Nope. So uh, yeah, we're gonna solve what I think is right and uh if it's not well i'm taking care i know of an oil leak and two uh yeah i don't have a number two we'll figure out plan two when we figure out well when we do what we're doing let me bring it in here i'll also show you what i'm going to do for a quick diagnosis other than uh, me throwing a borescope down there there's nothing i'm gonna I, i'm gonna do so be right back let me get the hood open and yeah i mean it's on the rack but it doesn't have to go up currently all right first thing is to fire this thing up uh. And yes, she is an automatic, don't get on me too bad. What I'm gonna do is this magic glowy dye, dump it into the engine, let it run for a few minutes, circulate, and hopefully it's gonna show me uh, glow. The theory with this is it's going to mix with the oil, the oil's going to hopefully leak out, and then, yeah, I'd be able to find said leak. We really should do it on a hot engine, but, well, we're doing a cold start. So, I'm going to give this a few minutes to circulate, and, uh, yeah, I'll get back to you with looking. I thought recording under a beetle was going to be a pain in the butt. This might be harder. And, no, I'm not taking my hood off. That's rubbing. That's good. All right, guys, it's obviously dark because, well, UV light. Um, show you what I got going on. The engine's warmed up and leaks are happening. I'm under the car. The car's obviously up here um, because, like I said, I want to check rear main. So bear with me with the, uh, the bad lighting. Give me a sort of a walk around. Oop, front of the engine. Not, nothing's really standing out as far as a glow. Nothing in the crank area. Nothing underneath yet showing up, but right here, I don't know if it'll pick up. I got an oil drip that's actually, I've been tracing. 
So if you see that, that's fresh oil and it's gathering. It's all up the side of the cover and it's coming down the side of the block. Really hard for this camera to pick up or the camera's barely picking up. But inside the rear main area, it's dry, it's not, it's not, nothing's glowing. And I got the same thing on this side, around that bolt. Anything that looks wet, it's actually glowing on my end. So that bolt up there, that's gathering. So it looks like it's either a pan gasket. My lower gasket's glowing to bat wings, but it's not bad. Um, it's either a pan gasket, which it can't be because this leak is coming from higher than when the pan, where the pan gasket is. So hold on, let me get you on a tripod. Um, let me lower the car, check up top. Whoa, let me lower the creepy lighting. Let me lower the car, check up top, uh, see if I got anything glowing now because it looks like I said, the one line on passenger side looks, it's above the pan, so it's coming down from there. So valley or, you know, whatnot. So let me get this thing down some and scan up top. But it is definitely a uh, pressurized leak. I'm looking to see if I have anything obvious in the back. Nothing's really glowing. Not, ooh, scary light. Uh, nothing's really glowing as much as I want it to. Side light. Gonna shut this down. Uh. All right, the, vi the valley's showing, man, my lighting's crap right now. Um, the valley's showing some signs of leak. What we're gonna do is plug in my um, boroscope and now be able to get behind there. Because like I said, I can see an active leak. Um, I just gotta find out where it's starting from. So let me get that set up and I'll uh, bring in if I can. But yeah, basically I'm just gonna take my camera and sneak it back there and see if it uh, will pick up. Because my eyes can't hook on, but I can get light back there. So. Guess what I'm getting at is we're doing this anyway, but uh, I just want to make sure that it, the, the rear main not actively showing signs is uh, I do like. So we're, we're, we're progress there because it's leaking outside. So outside equals up. And like I said, it's above the pan. So anything that's going to leak above the pan valve covers or uh, and they look dry or um, valley pan pressure sensor, so on and so forth. So, all right, give me a second. Let me get stuff set up and see if I can get some glow action. All right, guys, here's where I'm at. I'm not 100% sure it's coming from the top. Um, my probe light or camera records about the same as this. So I can't actually physically get my eyeballs in there to see if we have a leak. Um, and everything on the camera shows up the same. I can tell you it's wet on the camera. Um, but is it old wet or just old wet that's getting activated from heat or if it's new wet actively leaking? The other thing, I crawled under the car again, looking at it, uh, you know, the seal, obviously. Rear main is dry. There's nothing coming out of that. The cover plate, though, um, if you don't know LS's, they have uh, a plate that bolts on and has the rear main in it. The, as a gasket around it, that could be leaking, um, the actual perimeter gasket. And the reason I say that is it's either side of the block and it del the leak starts slash deletes right at that, say, seam line. It goes up a little bit, but you know. So I know I have a leak up here. We're definitely changing that. But is that the, the main issue? Don't know, we'll find out. Because it could be running along the transmission bell housing and coming out. I mean, it's really hard to see in there. Um, 
actually run is you're looking, I should have put two bottles in here, but I didn't want the whole engine to glow. So we're still gonna tear this thing apart. Um, now that I got it nice and warm, we're gonna let it cool down um, and start stripping everything. I really gotta take a lot of this apart anyway because I know I have a bad PCV line, hence why that's here. You don't need it if you're doing it, but I'm gonna be, gonna be in here, I'm gonna take it apart. Um, I think a new intake manifold gasket, so on and so forth, valley pan gasket. Uh, basically the whole top of the engine um, between the heads is, uh, I'm gonna re-gasket. Like I said, I don't plan on selling this car anytime soon, so mine's will do it. If it fixes a leak, I'm ecstatic. If not, well, it's gonna go to a Corvette shop to uh, get done. Because again, can I do it? Yes, but by me having my own cars on the lifts, I'm not making any money. It just so happens I have a light week and uh, I'm actually able to scoop this thing on here. So, hence, filler material. Or I did shocks on my truck, it rides so much better. I mean, yeah, it's, it's amazing what neglect gets you as far as uh, not being able to get to your own stuff. And because I know I can do the job, I don't obviously farm it out. Um, especially like a 10 minute job. No, no, no sense in farming it out, in my opinion. But to do the, uh, the old rear main, that, that and it's, you know, cause cover plate, all that stuff has to get done. Uh, that is definitely gonna get farmed out. Could I do it? Yes. Um, I think it books for 11 hours. Never done it before. I'd probably be right in that window. But uh, the thing is, I do not want to mess with it be honest with you I say that now I'll probably end up doing it but uh yeah we'll we'll find out but yeah let me let this thing cool down um and we'll start uh start tearing this manifold off I am going to take the throttle body off I have a new gasket you don't have to you can disconnect the coolant lines but uh I don't want to so I'm just gonna pull the throttle body yeah I'm bored I gotta you'll see me start working on this almost immediately um, me, I gotta stand around for a while. All right, guys, I already bled down the fuel pressure, but the uh, first thing I'm gonna do is get the fuel line off. Pocket screwdriver, little clip, beeps. Hopefully my tool is going to fit in here. Otherwise I have to cut it down. All right, problem one, let me cut my tool down. All right, cut down, modified. Uh, hook it around, push in, pull out, and it'll release that fuel line. Just beep boops, yeah. Around, push, well, push line, pull back, should disconnect it. So, fuel line disconnected. Make sure you bleed off your pressure first, whether you're working on, you know, an actual LS1 or an LS block, as far as a Chevy goes, or a GMC. Um, find your Schrader valve, mine's right up top. Usually they're on, on the trucks. They're what, passenger side, you'll find it under the cover maybe, or exposed, I can't remember. Um, yeah, but that, that, that's all you do there. All right, EVAP lines, let's disconnect these things. They're simple enough, you just push and uh, they'll, they'll disconnect. Like I said, I'm taking off my throttle body. So I'm going to disconnect it from here and then in the back. Push your little tabby in and it'll get out of the way. And same thing back here on this one. Push tabby in and it'll and it will release. Like that. So then this whole unit's gonna come with the uh, with the throttle body. Uh, let's see, while I'm here, injectors, we'll disconnect these. Minor metal tabs, so you push them in and pull them back, or pull the injector back. If you've worked on German cars, it's like that. You don't pull the spring tab out. Can't tell you how many times I hate getting cars in that have these metal things missing. Push in, pull out. Push in. Why, why are you stuck? Pull out. 
That one's off. This is what cylinder seven. Push in, pull out. That was the easiest. All right, these tabs. We'll probably end up breaking them, but not on purpose. We'll get these tabs out. Same thing, coil wires. Under the coil. Pretty much what you're doing, you're just getting everything out of the way so this thing can, you know, get the hell out of the way. Injectors. Push your metal tab in, pull out. Metal tab in, pull out. In. Come on. Out. And if you have a truck, I know your stuff's different. You have a weird pull tabby system. And the only reason I can think that they changed it is because everyone loses those damn metal tabs. Like I said, if you work on German cars, you know exactly what I'm talking about with the, uh, the, the spring clips that hold these things. To me, far more superior design, but also I get them to where they're not attached anymore. All right, that's out, that's out. Throttle body, disco this guy. Get this harness out of the way. All right, so harness out of the way. Disconnected from fuel, still leaking, good. I will be back. All right, anywho, get the snorkel off so I can start getting the uh, throttle body off. Like I said, you can, um, if you wanted to, leave the throttle body connected. You have two coolant lines under here. Uh, that you'd have to disco, but um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna opt to take the uh, throttle body off. It's what, 10 millimeters, three of them. So it's pretty simple. Yeah, well, let's, let's just, yeah, we'll, we'll just break everything. That, that's fine. We'll, we'll just, just get it out of the way. Ta-da! Simples. So, all right. Top of the engine's basically stripped. Um, everything that I need to disco is discoed. I got my PCV on this side. Disconnect that. Take it out of the uh, clippy deuce. Valve cover. Vent. Get that out of the way. And yeah, I think it's just, uh, you know, zip, 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 and uh, yank it out. At least that's the plan. Let me get the uh, throttle body off first and uh, get back to you. I'm pretty sure it depends. Also, if you hear background noise, like someone else is struggling to do the exact same job, they are. Except it's on a uh, Silverado. Mm -hmm. Get out of there. one more somewhere in an area of generality over here well what I break okay. you're almost out there we go all right thought about it discoed Yeah, pull it. So I can pull that. Wow, that is very, very sludgy in there. This car spent a lot of time idling. Was, I'm going on. I do not have a blown head gasket because that'd be terrible right now. Um, did you reconnect? You did. Oh, ground. What are you, ground? Say 10. I can get you out of the way. I don't need to take that out of the way. Oh, well, I'm replacing it, so I will take it out of the way. I don't know. They want to ground this. Where'd my magnet go? Well, 
that's cute. It's in the capture. All right. Piece of ink. Let's just get it out of the way because it's going to be annoying to lift. And like I said, I have another one anyway. Because this was broke when I got in and I kind of just hodgepodge her together, if you will. You know, this car's not being magnetic or annoying. Because I can't just like onto things. All right, so uh, next thing is, yeah, let's uh, pull this intake. What do I got? I got bolt, bolt down there and then all the other ones, I think. Pretty sure. Should all be tens. Oh, sorry. This one, that one, that one, that one. that one and that one. I cannot remember if there's one in the back or not. We will find out when I break this intake manifold. All right. Where's, I want speed. All right, before I was rudely interrupted again, let's NASCAR this, let's do the, uh, they're eight mils. one behind where, where's a quarter drive get to it well that is a piss poor design Chevy one time I wish this is a flex head Got the struggle bus on the other side of this hood right now. It's delightful. Uh, at least fiberglass is flexy. All the fingers. Come on. Light. Struggle is real right now. You're not out. But now I can turn you. So that's the thing. I got that going for me. All right. Pull you. Pull you because you got a stupid bracket. Oh, you're not going to pull because, well, of course you're not. All right. Nothing there, nothing there. Don't get anything on the other side. Here, squish. Good, good, good. That's crossover. All right. Boink. Boink. She's loose. Let's pull out these bolts. I always swear my, my LS, these bolts are stuck in there on my truck, but I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know guys, I'm guessing here. Oh no. What are you stuck on?
harness move. Bolt out. I think I'm stuck on my brake booster. Pretty sure it pulls vacuum from the back of this damn thing. Flashlight, where'd you drop? Oh, that is a soupy mess down there. God, but go, go this way. We're just gonna leave the booster attached. Yeah, yeah, no. Map sensor and whatever the hell that doobly doob was. Pretty sure these quarter turn out, but I'm not even gonna, not even gonna mess with it. But yeah, intake out. I'll be right back. I'll be right back, and I'll drag you in and show you. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe this isn't going uh, in vain, if you will. All right, guys, I'm gonna do some quick vacuuming action to get this thing cleaned up, and I'll bring you in and show you what I got going on. But definitely, this oil pressure has been sent or changed before, or the center unit. Cam sensor looks original. So I'm, I'm thinking someone was diagnosing top end bottom, exactly what I was doing. And I'm leaning more towards it's my backing plate that's leaking, not so much the rear main. Regardless, it is going to that proctologist most likely. But let me clean this up. It's good because it also looks like they reused all old seals when they did this. Why, I don't know. But I'll be right back. Let me get this thing cleaned up. All right, guys, here's what I got going on. She's pretty, she's actually pretty clean. I mean, obviously. Hold on, let me rotate stuff around. Oily mess, but that, that uh, pressure sender right here, that looks like it's been replaced. Cam sensor looks original, but you can see it's all fresh-ish looking oil. I did throw my uh, uh, UV on, this one does have it. And nothing, nothing out of the normal picked up even if it picks up in this glowing so I think it is a uh, rear main issue but I'm gonna clean all this clean all this up reseal the plenum or the uh, valley gasket you gotta knock out the uh, knock sensors under here but yeah we'll reseal this reseal those and I'll at least be more com or comfortable knowing that the top end has been gone through and it's uh, new stuff because on the intake like i said you could tell by the way that it was by me taking off and i even seeing witness marks on things they look like they reuse the old gaskets now don't get me wrong they are reusable but uh if they're set from 2002 they uh not they're 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 bad by now so anywho let me uh let me get stuff what did i push on this damn thing Anyway, let me get uh, let me get this all wiped out, and then we'll start pulling the uh, valley pan off. All right, guys, sort of hosed down and cleaned up. Uh, knock sensors, squeeze the sides. They should just hopefully pull right out, like shup. One, they're egg shaped, is what I'm getting at. So you make the egg around. Oh shit. Don't do what I just did and break it. It'd be fine. We'll just have a knock code. Shit. <laughs> Get those out of the way. Might see if the O'Reilly's has a uh, new harness because they just plug in. Let me back out this because I have to get the uh, knocks out. Twenty-two fits. Oh, 
hopefully this is going to cooperate and we'll pull these guys out. They shouldn't be in there that tight. Oh, yeah. Nice. This back one looks better. Oh, that was easy. All right, we're pulling these knocks out. One. Two. You can definitely tell this one had water in it. Uh, you probably can't see, but she rusted. That looks fine. All right. Oh, what's that? Is that oil? Maybe it's oil. Anyway, let's get this valley off. 10 mils. NASCAR. Off. Oh, come on. Get these guys out of the way. And this thing should hopefully just lift. I have to break it loose some. There we go. All right. Mike, out of the way. Clean. Yeah, there's still some, there's some oil going into this guy, which is fine. But uh, yeah, Valley looks impressively clean. Except for the hunk of crap I just dropped into it. You might be able to see the color of the oil now. But it's a light green. I really should have put two dye packs in here or dye things. But yeah, that's good. Pull this off gently so I don't drop crap in the engine. Yeah, let me clean the seal, <clears throat> seal off. I'll get the pan on and we'll change out the sensor that looks like it's brand new. Yeah, You're watching a video knowing I already know that this isn't gonna fix it, but it's fine because I feel better about myself sealing this. How it goes. All right, let me clean all this stuff up and then we'll go for uh, start doing reassembly, at least on this valley pan. All right guys, while I'm here and Dummery's happening on my other end oil pressure sender loosen you need a special socket you get from the o'reilly's or any of your parts houses for these things but uh unscrew it yeah i don't know if it'll focus but whoop there's definitely oil in there. So she was bypassing. New sending unit. And same thing, we'll just put it on and snug it up. Installation is obviously the same as, you know, uninstallation, but but the, actually, let me clean around here, that bung, and we'll snug that in. Give me one second. All right, guys, cam sensor, oil pressure sensor cleaned up. Now let's, now let's install her. I feel better, obviously, that I see a leak or saw a leak in there. I will, I will clean the connector for, you know, obvious reasons. But uh, I'm not saying that this was my oil leak, but you know, stuff is definitely leaking on this engine.
pull this and then, uh, yeah, connect it. It's pushing back. I'm going to push the pins back in at least. But boop, there we go. All right, that's fixed. Now let's move on to the uh, putting this valley pan back in. So let me grab it. I'll be right back. Well, I'll put the gasket on. Gasket just gets plopped on. Like I said, I already went and cleaned all this stuff. Uh, let me grab the thing. This, obviously, just align it. You know, make sure everything's aligned and bunk, pop her down. Get your gasket into alignment and drop some bolts. And just run down your bolts or at least get them seated. Now these get torqued to 18, um, but I'm gonna use my Shiwi of a ratchet, which only torques to four, and then I'll follow it up with a ratchet ratchet. Is there a torque sequence? Probably. Am I gonna follow it? I don't know, I'm gonna make one up as I go. Right now, I'm just trying to get this thing ran down. All right, guys, 18 foot-pounds on these things. Start from center, crisscrossy crossy out is, well, what I'm gonna do. Click. Oh, the body. Click. And I'll go back and double check torque after I get all these things ran in. Run that in. Run this guy in. And again, these guys do not have to be tight. Throw these connectors on. Should do the right thing and, you know, change that one out, but I am not. Mainly because it's my car and I don't care. And this one. Both those knock sensors really should be replaced. So we'll probably be in here for some other reason again. Because. I'm an idiot. What did I just drop? PCV system that I'm replacing anyway. I am happy I am replacing it. There's a good reason for that. It currently is blowed apart. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not holding on. So, new PCV that's, you know, attached or whatnot. We'll actually put it in to where it needs to go and then sneak it, starting the driver's side. It just gets pushed into the grommet. Uh, 
like that. Now run along this side and obviously plug into the uh, uh, throttle body. Boop, boop, or intake manifold. There's the ground screw. Ooh, it has a keeper on it too. Who knows the thing? This one, uh, wiggle, wiggle onto here. That's connected. All right, so PTV line in, attached. Good, this, like I said, will go on to the, uh, I think I got that upside down. Crap. Yeah, that goes intake. Wiggle, wiggle. Jiggles, wiggles. All right, yeah, and then this will get snapped onto the intake manifold whenever I get the intake manifold on. So we'll just bend it out of the way like I normally do. All right, those are good, those are cleaned. No cooling or anything to look like it's leaking, so we're good there. I guess we could drop this manifold back on. Already cleaned all this stuff up. Um, I gotta change the gaskets in the manifold. They're easy to just pop out and you put new donuts in there. Um, but let me, let me do that and I'll just be right back to shove this thing together. All right, every I gotta change this battery. I'll be back. All right, let's wrap this thing up, hopefully. Um, manifold. Well, throw it in. Everything's good, new gaskets on here, so and so forth. So, might have to get you out of the way so I can connect the backside and we'll snake it on. This, I can't remember how the hell I took it out. Yeah, I'm talking about the brake booster. How did you run? Did you run under all this? Yes, I think so. Maybe? Fuel line. I think we went under all that. Crap. I know where it needs to go, guys. The problem is I can't remember how it went to get there. It had to have went behind all of it. It had, it, it, it had to have. Where's the flashlight? All right. Plan W. Take this line off because I can get to it. And deal with it later. Plug that in there. Good. Where's the line? Where, where did you naturally want to fall to be inconvenient? There. That. That. That seems to check out. So we got that, and then I'm missing a plug. It's going well. There it is. Okay, map sensor. All right. Now let's snake this on. Let me get a little lube on that though. All right, only sensors I'm concerned about is connecting the backs connected right now. And then we'll worry about the uh, other stuff. Map sensors connected. to try to fish the old hand in to get it connected. Now, that's sharp.
All right, that's on. Gently slide this thing back. Let's get some bolts started. Stay. Come on, find your home. All right, you guys were probably yelling at me. That's fine, I can take the abuse. Pull these guys back out. Pull this backwards. Drop your bolts in because you got a damn cowl that's in the way. And then gently throw all this crap back in. Battery dead. Nope. All right, final torque sequence on this is uh, eight. Let me see what an eight feels like with a ratchet. Fairly if. It's pretty, pretty snug, snug. I know. This is going very scientific right here. Click. Pull that good. And it's the last one. Which is most awkward. I've seen people cut holes in the cow. I understand why now. That feels tight. Crap. 
There we go. Yeah, it feels about what I've had on there. Maybe a little tighter. Double check. Click. 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 I'm pretty sure this doesn't fit, but I'll try. That sort of fits. Kinda. Oh yeah, click. clicking clicks there this one's just awkward but it clicked clicks there and yeah all the other ones I ran good all right PCV system hook that up We got this stupid little capture bolt and this line. We'll wiggle worm this guy on. Why does it feel so short? PCV line on. Click, click. Weird grounding stud. That's throttle body. Alright. Clink. Badink. Badink. Fuel injectors. Like so. Coils. Click. That's all on. That's all on. Let's put that in. I guess we can put the throttle body on. I have a new gasket. Honestly, that one looks fine. We're not even going to use it. Usually these gaskets, if they're flush, you don't want to even attempt to reuse them uh, because they won't seal. But seeing how this one is protruding, I feel comfortable in my car. Or I feel comfortable seeing how it's my car to reuse it. I did buy one. So I guess it's thought that counts. <laughs> I feel better about myself if I actually put uh, manual torques on this. That's good. Got the uh, e evapy. Stuff. Slide this back down to where it was. Clip, get out of there. All right, evap line, power. Snip that in. This port goes click. That's on. Whatever the 
heck this guy is. Shit. I need, I need, I, I, I would like. Put that in, put that in. That's good, that's good, that's good. Injectors. Click, click, you go under, last injector, click, all right, evap line, click, coils, click, all this clicking means this progress is happening. Tuck that under there. Our harness. Oh. Push that back. Evap line's on, all that's on. Fuel line. Click. All right. I think we're done. <laughs> oh, I think I have throttle sensor on the other, throttle position on the other side. And I want to check if it's tight. And this thing's not important anymore. Whoops. So I can't remember what the hell. Oh, that went to the uh, knock sensor thingy. Really? That's tight. All right. This line on TPS. On. Big stupid snorkel. On. Gotta take these clamps and real and realign and realign. Really, really? Am I getting my butt kicked by an airbox? What the hell? All right, well, I like it there. Oh, all right, that's in. All right, son. It's almost in. I have no idea where that goes. This is a stupid design. But it's in. All right. Should we toast it off and see if it starts? Because I'm, I'm semi-curious. Everything should be connected. Yeah, let's give it a whirl. Hopefully prime the system. Yeah, buddy. Good news is I didn't screw up too bad. No leaks. I guess I could tighten the clamps again. All right, good news. Oil. Oil pressure gauge is working. Um, engine's humming, so that's good. I don't feel anything weird like a misfire or oddness. Fortunately, we can't rev these things up like old school because drive by wire, but uh, at least we don't have any codes immediately. Corvette thing. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so seems like it should be adequate. Revs, no leaks, running good. No codes yet. All right, let me get this thing in the air and see if it, well, calmed down with leaking or if it's still leaking. I'll be right back. Well, guys, I don't want to speak too soon, but uh, probably won't be able to see. It's been idling for about 15 something minutes and these bolts would have already had oil on them. Nothing yet. Same thing down on the side of this case, that's completely dry. So I'm gonna let her keep hopefully cooperating and maybe, hell, maybe it doesn't have to go to the proctologist because that, that would be nice. So yeah, now I'm just gonna be bored, let this thing idle up in the air uh, and uh, report back. But yeah, I'm gonna give it like another 15, 20 minutes so everything gets hot again. I mean, the engine was already warm um, from doing this, but yeah, it's running good, running smooth. It's not doing anything abnormal, so I don't think I screwed anything up, which is a good thing. So I'll report back. All right, guys, I'll try to snag in here and show you as best as I can, but I think we actually did a thing. And I don't think we'll have to get the whole drive doobly do torn out of this. That's still a little weepy around that bolt up here. But I think that's the pan gasket, and if that's the case, I can live with it. But this side, completely dry. So I'm hoping. Ugh, let me turn that around. I'm hoping whatever the hell I did up top fixed whatever hell I had going on in the bottom because I do not, to be honest with you, want to pay somebody to do uh, the old rear main. I think my pan gas is leaking. Um, you can see weeping around the edges, so and so forth. But uh, as far as that goes, I think it's good. But let me drop this thing down. Make sure I didn't code while it's been sitting here because I know my uh, fuel mileage just went down dramatically from idling. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll wrap this one up. Not been something simple, something of mine. Introduction to the C5, I guess. I don't buy them perfect, but I buy them at the right price. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. O2 C5 wrapped up. I actually just got back um, from, I don't know, 20. 30 mile drive about an hour ago. I edited this video already. So she's been sitting, it ran great, everything, well, it did stuff, it didn't blow up and it got me home. So, you know, check that one off, we didn't screw it up. But I did sneak a uh, paper under here uh, to see if any drips happened. I did also, you know, you know, sn snuggle under because I didn't feel like racking it up again. And, uh, but, Bell housing, uh, bell housing's wet again, but nothing has hit the ground yet. And it's been sitting for, uh, I don't know, 20, no, about an hour. Oh, a little over an hour. Can I get the paper? Oh, sexy man bows. Uh, get it from this side. Oh, what a wrap up. Uh, watch, it's gonna be covered with oil. Come here. E. Come, come here. Ta-da, no drips. So, like I said, ugh, I'm getting old. And what I was gonna say is, yeah, the bell housing's still wet, uh, or it's, it's moist, for lack of better terms. Uh, I haven't checked that side yet, but that side is. But nothing, nothing is hitting the ground. And you know what, I, my entire fleet is GM, as far as my daily driver, so and so forth. If, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It, as long as the oil doesn't touch the ground, I am fine with it. And also it doesn't smell like burning oil in the car. So I think something got slowed down because after about, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes, you, especially if you had the outside, you know, outside vents running, you know, not the recirc, uh, you, you, you definitely knew something was getting warm, but I didn't smell it. So I think we did something, but yeah, fires up, runs good, like I said, I think I got it. It's either going to be a pan gasket or the the rear main seal cover plate gasket. Uh, if it doesn't get worse, I'm just going to leave it. Be honest with you. I, hell, I tell my customers the same thing. Uh, 
I only start getting concerned when oil starts hitting the actual ground. Then I will kind of do something because I like that. I don't care if they burn it, but I like to use all of my oil. If it's just sweating a little horsepower here and there, that's fine. But puddles, yeah, it's not good. Especially when you show up to a swanky neighborhood and they got nice white concrete, you know, driveways. Looks a little weird when you're bringing out the old drip pan. Uh, but with that said, car's wrapped up. Little video, like I said, I have a slow-ish intermediate week. I was ahead and underbooked, but overbooked at the same time. So, did, might, might as well get my stuff on. Like I said, I, I know a, bunch, uh, a couple of you commented on the, the vent in the background. Little introduction, yes, it's mine. Uh, I got a sweet deal on it. Uh, I am fully happy with it. Do I wish it was a wiggle stick, wobble stick? Yeah, but at the end of the day, I'll take a slush box because, you know, money's right. And, well, it's fun. Plus, I'm old, and I, the shifting, I, I do enough with it with Volkswagens. I don't have to prove I know how to drive an automatic or a manual. Uh, but with that said, I'll wrap this episode. This is a long outro, but if you like this episode, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. If you do, I promise you, we will chat, chat. As always, thanks for watching, and hopefully see you on the next one.